In this Power BI report, you can save a comment, you can edit a comment, and then you can delete a comment. Hi, my name is Ned, this is my dog Chai, and today we're talking about translitical task flows. Now, this video is part of a series, and if you've been following that series, you've seen me building the dashboard that I just demoed from the ground up. You've seen me build the functionality that allows me to click a PO and save a comment on that PO. You've seen me build the functionality that allows me to click a comment and edit said comment. And now finally, you're going to see me build the functionality that allows me to click on a comment and delete it. So let's jump in. We're gonna start with the Microsoft Power BI report itself. This is a button that when you click has an action. So that action is calling what's called a UDF or a user data function, and it's passing it the primary key of the column of the comment that I'm clicking, and then the user ID, so my user principal. It's getting that primary key via this DAX function here that's essentially saying like, hey, if there's only one comment selected, then return that a comment ID as a string, else return basically a blank string. And then it's getting the user from just the user principal name in DAX. Now the way that this data model is set up is we it's a composite data model. So we have a sales fact table that's an imported off of an Excel file. And then we have a live real-time reports data table that's coming from a Microsoft Fabric SQL database. If you're interested in seeing more details about the initial setup of this report, watch the earlier two videos that I created when I was building it. I go into this report in quite a bit more detail. Now, I'm also just gonna take a quick second to say, hey, if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing if you like seeing stuff like this. Uh, I like doing kind of cool and wonky stuff in kind of the business intelligence domain. I tend to focus on Microsoft Power BI and Fabric, and I'll be honest, I don't always get things right, but I like to think I make kind of interesting stuff. So I'd love to have you join me for that journey. All right, now let's go look at the user data function, which is the new Fabric functionality that that button is calling. And that's where the real magic happens behind this report. Now, if you've watched any of the earlier videos where I showed you how I built my add annotation function, my update annotation function, and then finally my delete annotation function, this code probably looks pretty familiar for, for you. But I'm gonna just kind of quickly run you through it. But first, what is a user data function if you're new to this video? A user data function, I believe, is just kind of a rebranded version of Microsoft Azure functions, but it allows you to use Python code and then call that Python code and pass it variables from Microsoft Power BI. It's gonna unlock a ton of new functionality for Microsoft Power BI. And I can tell you right now, there are a lot of Power Platform Office 365 admins that are not ready for what's about to hit them. That said, uh, I'm really excited about it as someone who likes to build kind of wonky Rube Goldberg machines. So how is this delete annotation function working? Well, first of all, it's getting past the SQL database connection that contains our comments. And then it's getting past the primary string of the comment or the primary key of the comment that I want to delete. And then the user ID as a string. The first thing it's doing is it's checking to see that a comment uh, has been selected. And if not, it's throwing an error. And that error that it's throwing is, hey, please select a comment. Then it's saying, okay, uh, for that primary key, let's set it to data. And then let's open up a connection to a SQL database and let's execute a query. And that, what that query is going to do is that query is going to return the username of the person that made the comment. Now, if there are no results, which is why this is in a try statement in Python, right? Because it's trying to execute this statement right here, it will throw a function saying, hey, the comment ID does not exist. However, if there is a result, it will set it to a variable called user ID. The next check that I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, if 
the user that's trying to delete this comment is not the user that made the comment, then throw an error and say, hey, you're not the user that made this comment. Sorry, you can't update it. Now, this is basically just kind of some functionality to make sure that others who are using the report can't delete comments that they themselves didn't make, which I think is probably just a best practice. So then finally, I am just setting another delete uh, delete statement, although I think this is probably duplicative and I could probably just get rid of this right here and then just change this to data. And uh, I'm essentially just executing this query to delete the comment where that comment ID is working. Now, this is all connected to a Microsoft SQL database. Now, that Microsoft SQL database is something that I set up in the previous video, but just a quick reminder, here it is. It's really nothing special. If we go in, there's a DBO schema, and then, hey, there's a single table. And I didn't put in any kind of effort into data modeling this. This table was just designed to store comments. So if we take a look at what columns exist, you'll see that there is a comment ID, a comment date time, a user ID, the PO the comment is referencing, and that this is what's used in the join in Microsoft Power BI, the comment itself, and then an update date time. One thing that is kind of cool about this table, so I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna go script as create, and let's just take a look at this, is uh, the comment ID is a uh, primary key that's essentially incrementing by one automatically. So I don't need to do kind of weird SQL to figure that out. Uh, other than that, the comment is a max varchar. All of the other fields are either date time or varchar 100. So all of that combined essentially means that I have the report that I just gave you a demo of. If I ran through this video really fast, I encourage you to go watch the earlier two videos that I made on this report. I'll link them down below in the video description and you'll kind of get to see how the report evolved along the way, which is really fun. Now, there have been a couple of video comments asking for me to provide the files. Uh, happy to provide the Python on the user data function, and I'll link that below in my GitHub. I think I've done that for the other two videos. However, the Power BI report will be kind of useless to you. It's a real-time Power BI report, so like it, you won't have the access to log in and like connect to it. Um, if you just want the template and kind of the style guide, I have plenty of other videos where I give those templates away for free. If you want me to link those, let me down and let me know down in the video comments and I'll send you the video link. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, Jai has fallen asleep because apparently this video was so boring behind me. Uh, and again, if you like the content, subscribe, like the video, uh, leave a comment. It really helps us grow. I The channel is officially monetized, or at least will be officially monetized as of tonight, which is really exciting. So thank you all for watching these videos. It means a lot to me. I put a lot of effort into them, even if sometimes my editing doesn't you know, make it look like I do. So I really appreciate y'all. Thanks for watching. Bye.